Hey guys, it's Wick um, from uh, uh, Server 891, just here with my second buff video. Uh, here to kind of elaborate on flat refines, flat buffs versus uh, percentage buffs. And, uh, you know, one of the things I'm hoping to do with this video is kind of change the conversation a little bit. Uh, I see a lot of people on the discords or discussions talking about uh, buffs and, you know, making fun of somebody with low buffs. And I'll tell you right now, you're going to have a lot of trouble uh, going positive against a lot of those keeps with low buffs because those are the people who are kind of ahead of the game figuring out that flats, which don't give you a high number on your battle report, are actually a little better uh, on defense uh, than the percentages are. So you, you'll see people with low percentage beat, uh, buffs and you'll wonder why they kicked your ass. I'm going to tell you right now, it's because they had flat buffs. So uh, and I'm slowly transitioning to them. Um, I, again, I'll just cut to the chase. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm about half flat half percent on my wall gen, but I'm probably going to switch over to pure flat soon. Uh, I tend to refine as gens, gems come. I'll pick one or two traits and spend a couple hundred thousand gems just changing one or two. Uh, so it's a slow process changing buffs. So uh, from knowing from the get-go what your goal, uh, your goal is for the game, where you want to end up, uh, doing it once is going to be a lot cheaper. <laughs> Don't make the mistake like I did of doing it one way and then realizing it was the right way and doing it better. So... Um, Flat versus percentage buffs, there's some very stark differences. Uh, you, anybody who's refined gear uh, knows that whenever you're refining Civ gear in particular, uh, you spend gems, you lock a buff once you like it, you want to go for gold. Um, but there's flats and percentages in there. So the percentage buffs are of a percent of each troop's absolute number for a trait and slightly favor top-tier troops if they're maximally debuffed. They strongly favor if the max debuff is not hit. So in other words, um, the percentage buffs, this is one of the most, I think, unknown things about the game that a lot of people don't realize. The percentage buffs can be debuffed to a maximum of 50% of their value. In other words, if I have a 1,000% range attack debuff and somebody hits me with a 1,000% range attack buff, he doesn't go to zero. Only 500% counts. In other words, I can only debuff a enemies percent buff by 50 percent maximum no matter how good my debuffs are so that's incredibly important to the conversation uh flat buffs are the absolute number of intrinsic trait uh they very strongly favor lower tier troops and they cannot be debuffed that is a huge advantage and game changer for the flats is that since they can't be debuffed they count no matter how good somebody's debuffs are no matter how many sub gens they bring it's not going to be changed. So the, the flats have a, a statistical mathematical advantage in so far that they don't have to account for debuffs. It's important to look at this. A lot of people look at these attacks and don't realize it. Uh, the, it's funny. I've seen people with low attack buffs, like mocking somebody else's debuffs. And I'm like, I just keep quiet. I don't have the heart to tell them. The reason their debuffs didn't count is because your buffs are so crap. But like, like somebody with an 800 buff, like, look, he only has a 400% debuff. And I'm like, no, he has like probably like a thousand, but they didn't all count. So if you look at this right now, uh, this is a defense I took, uh, I think last Saturday. Um, if you look at the, uh, the, the attackers range troop attack. So that's on the right screen. I'm on the left. They're on the right. On the right screen, you have a ranged attack buff of 1815. Half of that, 907.5. Look at my debuff on the bottom left for range troop attack, 907. So I have a higher ranged attack debuff, but only 907 accounted, uh, got to count for this battle because theirs was only 1815. Now, if you look at the ground attack debuff, you'll notice mine is very low. However, that's very intentional. I have a bigger build, and I have massive amounts of mounted troops. Uh, and the thinking for me is that the layering mechanic and the battle mechanics means that I'm not going to get hit with a ground troop attack that's going to be effective until I'm like down to 5, million, 5 billion power from 33. So I don't worry about ground troop attacks. I worry about siege attacks. So that's where I put a lot of my debuff in. So again, if you look at the other attacks, and you'll see other ones here that are halved um, of theirs. For instance, uh, I think uh, mounted attack uh, a 1698, uh, my only half counts 849. Um, it's a, it's a trend. You'll see that people will have, 
uh, debuffs, it means that you hit the max that was allowed to count for that battle attack. If you uh, so, and and of course, this wouldn't be a um, every video of mine if I didn't involve a little bit of math. So, to kind of elaborate on this point of how they slightly favor if they're maxly debuffed, strongly favor if the max debuffs not hit, and how the flat buffs work and they favor the lower tier troops. I'm going to do some math here and hopefully help illustrate that for you. If you go to your rally spot, there's troop details button there on the left. You tap that, you pick up your, your troop details, you tap any tier, you can actually get the absolute number for any one of these traits. And as an example, I'm going to use HP for T14 ground and T14 siege and show you that because the absolute number of a ground troops HP is so much more immense than a siege tr uh, troops number that the advantage actually for the percentage buffs is more immense. And that has to do with, uh, that's also what you see between tiers. And we're going to do a little bit of math. All right. And here's the right, catapults. They've got an HP of 12, six, right? Ground troops, 94 thousand. So uh, it's pretty stark difference, right? This is the strongest HP and the weakest HP troop you have. Um, if you look at this math, I have the T14 ground tr uh, troop HP on the left, the buff in the middle, and the T14 siege HP on the right. And the first number is a buff of zero. So on the left, you have the ground troops native HP, 94,000. And on the right, you have the siege's uh, native, which is 12.6. And if you do a 30% buff with that's not debuffed, they're gaining on the ground troop 28,000 HP. So they go to 122,293, right? So it's a stark change, massive difference in terms of uh, their HP. The Siege's HP, right, is 1649 after the 30% buff, only gets a 3,805 uh, bonus. Now, it's important to know that a lot of the Siege is going to be killed by Siege, which is a weak attack. So it's also the proportional amount of damage that it's done. And then the, the ground is going to be, uh, uh, susceptible to a mount attack, right? So uh, again, the mount has the highest attack number. So that's roughly that number there that it's buffed is roughly an extra turn it'll be able to take against the mounted troop. And again, the T14 siege, if it's going up against the mounted troop, you could buff it. I could buff it 300%. It's not going to attack. It's not going to make it. Uh, it's still going to get housed. So uh, by from a mounted troop, but not by a siege, right? So the, the, the HP is really you're going to help you against a siege attack, but not a mount, right? Also important to know those intrinsic numbers. Now let's go down to the next column down, the third, the third row down, and that's 30, plus 30% 30 buff, but maximally debuffed at minus 15%. I could have just written plus 15%, but I wanted to show you how I got there. On the left, you'll see that, in fact, a maximally debuffed 30% uh, buff for the eight ground HP brings it down to 108, 182 with only an advantage of 14,110. Uh, still a big jump. And on the right, the siege uh, goes to 14,587 from 12,685. That's an increase of 1902. Still pretty decent numbers, right? And if you go down to the flat, which the highest flat refine you can get on a ground troop HP is 29,24, you only go to 96,996. So it's really made a very very modest change in the ground troops HP. So you're not getting the best buff for your ground troop T14 as a flat, not, ne not nothing nearly compared to uh, uh, buffed uh, the 30% or max debuff 30%. It's just a fraction of that. And the siege will show that the same thing, the same thing. So the higher tier troops, the flats, you get shortchanged. We know that. Once you get below T12, this doesn't hold true, by the way. T11's down, the flats catch up. And let's, let's go to the other extreme so I can show you the math. Here's T1. Same exercise. T1 ground HP on the left, T1 siege HP on the right. It's an absolute number, right? The HP is an absolute number. And now I'm looking at 3344 for the ground troops native, 484 for the T1 siege native on the right. And let's look at the 30% buff. A 30% undebuffed buff for the ground troop HP T1 is a one, plus 1,000. The 30% for the T1 siege is plus 145. Now look back here. And this one, that was 28,000 for ground. 
for T14. As an absolute number, it's a massive difference. But we're going to see what happens whenever you debuff it, right? It's even less here. It's only 501. But what happens if you take the same flat refines, right? So you have the max debuff is the third column, 556 five, on the right. Modest difference, right? Plus 72, plus 501 on the left. What happens whenever you add the maximum flat to the T1 ground troop? You go from 6268 for just times one refine, you go to plus 2924, right? So that's a hell of a buff from 3344. If you multiply it times uh, um, the flat refine, you've got an increase of your 187% buff of your original number or an, essentially an 87% buff, right? Where else are you going to find a... 87% buff on one refine. But that, that's just for T1s. This is, again, relevant, particularly for defense and very important in terms of the numbers game, right? The meat layers. If you've got 100 million T1s and you're buffing them 87%, it's 187% of the number, so you're an increase by 87%. That's a hell of a change. You're talking about a, a big upping in terms of the, the the way they're fighting. The same thing for T1 Siege. T1 Siege gets a plus 513 flat buff. That's a 205% of what the original was, or a 105% increase. Right? That's actually the level of a T7. Um, if you get um, uh, four of them, this is the math. So you get 513. If you do one piece of gear, as flat HP refines for Siege, times four, that's 2052. Uh, then add that to the original, you get 2536. 2536 is roughly the HP of a T7 uh, Siege. So uh, if you do four gear refines at flat, your T1s are fighting at a T7 layer's HP level. Now the attack didn't increase, the defense didn't increase, but the HP level increased. That's huge. That means it's taking a lot more hits to kill that thing. And it, 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 particularly for ground and particularly for meat layers, particularly for trap keeps, this is the mechanics. This is the science behind it. If you don't do flat buffs, those things don't work. Those things die by sneezing on them. But when you do flat buffs uh, for, one, for one piece of gear, giving them four flats, you can change one troop, a T1 troop, into the HP... Uh, which is particularly important for defense, uh, of a T7. So it's important to, to, to understand it uh, insofar that uh, defense this works, offense it doesn't. You're not going to refine a PvP gen and attacking general stuff to have flat uh, HP buffs because your marching army for a PvP attack is going to be mostly T12, 13, 14. So um, some people are... Putting, C, uh, putting flats in there uh, because there is, like I said, there is uh, the fact that you can't be debuffed. Um, but uh, again, the benefit is not as big when you don't have as many lower tier troops. When your lower tier troops, T1 through 10, are 1,000 to 10,000 a layer, um, you're not really benefiting here. It's your build that this really comes into play. It's the defense this really comes into play. And oftentimes nowadays, You'll be hitting a keep, they'll tank a defense, and you look at their buffs and you won't be impressed. It's because they did this. So understand that flats come into play, the fact that they can't be debuffed, and they primarily help out the lower tier troops uh, is, means that it's really perfect for defense. Um, and it truly is, if you're going to be a very pyramidal build instead of a cylindrical build, in other words, you're not 10,000 layers up and down, but you're 550 million T1, 300 million T2, 100 million T3, uh, you know, all the way and so on until you get to the thinner top layers. Flats are for you, mathematically. Uh, hope this helped clarify things uh, for flats. If you have any questions, I always happy to hear from you guys. Thanks. Bye.